Yeah, this is Billiam. So we're back looking at more Scooby-Doo. We're getting close to the end. I promise that was for me. I've been looking at Scooby-Doo's Scrappy-Doo era because I truthfully think the hate for the little man is overstated. In the last two videos, I went through Scooby and Scrappy-Doo's run of TV shows from 1979 to 1985 just to see where all this anger was stemmed from. And I found that Scrappy had very little to do with the show's decline in quality, something which Scrappy is accused of being responsible of by liars. The thing is, Scrappy was introduced when the show was already in a steady decline and it continued steadily to despite the introduction of the character. Simply put, when the show was bad, Scrappy was bad, but when the show started getting better, so did this little creature. I mean, you don't start with Lobster Scrappy, you have to work your way up to that. So we're through the mud. I've already watched a bulk of the content, so I can just sit back, watch a few TV movies that are left over, and have a good time. So we're talking about the trilogy of 1980s made for TV films, as well as another I don't know when else I would talk about. So let's watch a healthy amount of Scooby-Doo, because I'm really ready to stop talking about Scooby-Doo. Oh, thank you, Nico, my new permanent live musician we've added to the show, and thank you, Sea Monkeys, my new permanent titular co-host. See, Sea Monkeys no longer has a place in the background since I've moved to my new apartment, which is the permanent place in which I live now. See, what happened was is I bought this gallon bucket because I was getting so tired of having to get up every so often to fill my little Brita bottle, but it takes so many full Brita pitchers to refill this thing that I bought a bigger Brita pitcher. Well, the thing was, our fridge couldn't fit a bigger Brita pitcher and our landlord wouldn't let us get a new fridge. So we broke our lease, moved to a new place, and now I don't have to get up so much for water. The hose is because this thing is really heavy and I can just, you know, drink it like this. Ugh. None of that's really true. I just really wanted to show off the bucket, the new permanent way that I stay hydrated on the show. Oh, Nico, you got your own bucket too. I never learned piano. Yeah, it fits a whole gallon. <laughs> So first up, we have Scooby's first TV special, 1979 Scooby-Doo Goes Hollywood, an hour-long variety program. This actually came out in December of 79, three months after Scrappy debuted, but Scrappy is nowhere to be seen. The gang has become so popular, they star in their own show. Do you know how many times we've been put through this barrel and catapult routine? Uh-uh, how many? Like, well, uh, 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 But Shaggy falls victim to his avarice and decides he and Scooby deserve more. <gasps> Oh, but you're a star too, Scoob. And you don't have a flashy car like that. A big dressing trailer like the groom. Well, I do. And you don't get flowers on the set like Sherry. Observe as he perverts oh, no. Scooby's mind and soul with the sin of greed. Scooby and Shaggy start pitching new projects for Scooby to star in in an attempt to broaden his image as a superstar and expand his repertoire. We're telling you, we're coming through. The name to remember is Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo? Scooby and Shaggy screen a sizzle reel for this executive to show potential new avenues for Scooby-Doo. Holy crap, look at Scooby's arms. Big boy. They have Scooby as a Western with this lovingly animated villain. What's going on? Scooby just keeps messing up. It's a real shame, but that's what he gets for being grossly incompetent at everything. Maybe he should try being a YouTuber. Oh, they're doing happy days. Oh no, Scooby is going to be the Fonz. Oh, thank God, Scooby is not the Fonz. Oh, gross, they made Scooby the Fonz. Looks like some sort of rat. The executive is just the most empathetic, charismatic guy. He's like, Scooby, this sucks, but I really don't want to hurt your feelings. It's a whole new image for him, CJ. Like, consider the possibilities. Oh, I am. Oh my, I am. He knows when he's had enough Scooby-Doo. That's a man I can relate to. Another film? Mm -hmm. Oh my. Oh, all right. This special has some surprising production value with some crispy animation sprinkled in that's so crisp like the layers of a nice buttery croissant. But you are a star! What more could you want? The special opens with a cool for Scooby-Doo sequence that turns out to be the show's production. It makes me wish this were just a high quality TV movie version of a Scooby-Doo episode. Like it's the crabby creature of Creepy Craig! There's a lot of musical numbers here and they can certainly be charming. I love the opening number. If 
you don't know us, then you're sure gonna know us. We can tell you positive we'll never be in a flop. We'll star in a movie. We'll be on TV. Millions of people just looking at me. And this song that gets stuck in my head constantly. Gotta have some time to make my mind up. Gotta be sure I like what I can see. I hope so. It has a style which I recognize, but I don't have a name for. The songs are definitely fun, except for maybe the cast rendition of Scooby-Doo, Where Are You's theme song. Scooby-Dooby-Doo, looking for you. Scooby-Dooby-Doo, where are ya? Scooby-Dooby-Doo, we're missing you. Isn't any fun without ya? It's charming and cute. It has this weird appeal to it, I guess, sort of like, Kids bop with more Fred. Scooby wants to leave Scooby Doo. I don't get it, Scooby. What's your problem? Maybe this will change your mind. The kids of America reject Scooby's attempt to pursue new interests and doom him to continue making Scooby Doo for eternity. So I just need you guys to sit here and endure the duration of this montage with me. This is actually how long it goes on for. I mean, it, it just starts... I am down to one brain cell. Scooby-Doo is all I can handle now. I only make Scooby content now. I am a Dootuber. The message has settled in. I don't think this special is particularly good. I find the whole messaging of stay in your lane, Scooby, to be kind of depressing. I'm glad I watched it at least once. Seeing the classic art style done so expressively is a treat I didn't think I would get. And it did make me laugh a few times. But also there is this flashback which was created specifically by spiteful writers wanting to prevent a comprehensive Scooby-Doo timeline. What about this one, Shaggy? He's got character. <laughs> I guess in this timeline, they adopted Scooby like pretty recently. After Scooby-Doo Goes Hollywood, all of this happened, but in the late 1980s, Hanna-Barbera announced a new project, Hanna-Barbera Superstars 10. 10 made-for-TV syndication films which would star Hanna-Barbera characters, three of which including Scooby-Doo. By far the most notable of these films is The Flintones Meets the Gentins, which I actually liked a lot as a kid, but don't ever trust this stupid idiot. Have you tried talking to a fourth grader? They can't tell an equilateral to a quadrilateral, let alone what expectations one may have going into a crossover between the Jetsons and the Flintones. Uh, speaking of disappointing crossovers, the first of Scooby's three superstar films is Scooby-Doo meets the Booze Brothers. Scooby-Doo meets the Boo Brothers. I think I saw this one as a kid, but I don't remember too many details about it. Maybe like the setting and, you know, the Booze Brothers. Did you hear they met Scooby-Doo? Scooby-Doo meets the Boo Brothers. Unfortunately, this trilogy of films stars the Broken Gang. Only Shaggy and the dogs. There's not a Daphne in sight. Dude, Shaggy, she introduced you to her parents. You don't get a second chance with smart Daphne. Shaggy is notified he is inheriting the plantation of his recently deceased, certainly racist Colonel Uncle Beauregard. Uncle Colonel Beauregard? He was a Confederate Colonel, so I guess he was like 180 or something. So they drive down to the American South where they hear the property is said to be haunted. After some spookiness, Shaggy and Scooby wanna leave, but guess who's all excited about the possibility of ghosts. That's right, Scrappy-Doo, the inheritor of Daphne's borrowed brain cell from Velma. Scrappy can read now! Character development. Shaggy's truck breaks down, so they spend the night following a series of riddles left behind by his uncle, which supposedly will lead to the rumored Beauregard treasure. For my nephew, Shaggy. Don't you see? Maybe there really is a king's ransom and jewels here, and it all belongs to you, Shay. So that's the main plot. The setup is essentially enough to fill a 22-minute Scooby-Doo episode, but the film is 92 minutes, so they pad the rest of it with a series of subplots. There are too many subplots. They run into a gorilla on the way to the house. They meet a cop giving them trouble. He wants them to leave the area and forget the Beauregard Manor and its treasure. I mean, oops, didn't mean to mention the treasure. But let me tell you something, boy. You best turn right around and skedaddle back home. And he's looking for the gorilla too. There's a family who's been feuding with the Beauregards for decades. There's a brother and sister. The brother wants to shoot Shaggy and the sister is for Shaggy. Hey! Like yuck. Was that a Beauregard? 
word I've seen is barking with you. Oh yeah, and to deal with the ghost haunting the place and some skeletons sneaking around, two different occurrences. The broken gang calls some ghost hunters, but they're actually ghosts. That's right, in the most inconsequential yet somehow titular subplot, Scooby-Doo meets the Booze Brothers. Yeah! Let me at him! Let me at him! I'll give a fair eye! I'll, I'll give a fair clip! Ooh! Ow! And a couple of fat ants to go with it! You know, between the menacing presence on the cover and the foreboding music in the intro... Very scary, legendary Booze Brothers! <laughs> oh, I was expecting the Booze Brothers to be villains. Maybe like a parody of the Booze Brothers, but there's three of them. And they are dead and also mean. But they're not mean, they're just doing the Three Stooges, okay. What do you mean you can't find it? Give me that! <laughs> Don't do that! Shut up! Ooh! I mean, we got Curly, Mo, Stinky. So the Booze Brothers go around trying to catch the ghost, but they're so incompetent they can't. The gang is still silly, but no one character is more so. Scrappy is definitely the brains of the operation. He does have the brain cell, after all. At one point, the villains even take Scrappy out to throw the gang off their trail. The riddles are all pretty obvious, but trying to guess them before the gang does does keep you more engaged. I mean, it is a mystery, after all. Remember the last clue we had about a broken key unlocking the door? It was a broken piano key! So it turns out the cop, not the butler, which I neglected to mention, was the skeleton and he wanted the treasure for himself. The broken gang finds out the Booze Brothers are orphan ghosts. Well, you see, guys, the truth is, <laughs> we're orphan ghosts! What? I guess that means they died and their parents survived. Uh... Look, the gorilla wants to be Scooby's friend, but Scooby's like, yikes! <laughs> Scrappy gives the gorilla a pony because he's capable of empathy. Scrappy is smart, nice, and oh! That's what you think, Boneface! Look at him bite, what a cute maneuver. Definitely makes him cuter than usual. Like, knock it off! Shaggy has the, had it. What's the matter with you? Ow! Ow! What the f is his deal. Yeah, Scrappy, what's the big idea? Like, you want to knock our ears off? And that goes for you nerds, too. Like, hit the road. So just go back where you no, came Shaggy. from. Shaggy says no thank you to his family's racist fortune and decides to put all of it in a fund for helping orphans. Hell yeah, Shaggy. Overall, this one's okay. It has its moments, and it definitely feels like classic Scooby at times. It's just missing the rest of the gang. Okay, that was a lot. Nico, you should get some water, too. It's a lot what you're doing over there. What? Nico, no! That's not your water. Those are the sea monkeys. You're not trying to make my permanent co-host temporary, are you? Oh, you're out of water? Once for yes, twice for no. Oh, well, take this full Brita pitcher. Oh, that's only half full. Looks like we gotta move again. Next released in 1988, we have Scooby-Doo and the Ghoul School. I remember liking this one as a kid. I distinctly remember it being the first time I heard military time. That confused the heck out of me. Affirmative. The rendezvous on your field at 1400 hours. Excuse me, that's like 58 days from now. Shaggy, Scooby, and Scrappy get a physical education job at Miss Grimwood's finishing school for girls. But uh-oh, the students are all daughters of famous movie monsters. We have Sabella, daughter of Dracula, Elsa Frankenteen, daughter of the Frankenteen monster, Winnie, daughter of the Wolfman, show us all the right moves, Phantasma, daughter of the Phantom, and Tannis, daughter Mommy's of the Mummy. Are they the new gym teachers? Yes, Tannis, we've been waiting for them a long time. Oh, we can't forget about Miss Grimwood and Matches, the school's pet dragon. Matches like Scrappy, but thinks Scooby is overrated. Glad to know you, Matches. I'm Scrappy too. I guess you've already met my Uncle Scooby. <laughs> Cool. Shaggy and Scooby, although initially fearful, quickly warm up to the girls. Scrappy got along with everyone from the get-go because he's an extrovert and doesn't judge people for being different. <laughs> they're strange, Elsa! But they're in good shape, Fanty! Gee, thanks. He's also bulked up here. Wow, look at the core action. The ghouls are also memorable in their own ways. I really like Sabella. What's wrong with that? I'm 
Isabella, Count Dracula's daughter. Fantastic to meet you. Elsa. I mean and Phantasma. <laughs> Uh-oh, Shaggy has to help them get into shape before the annual volleyball game against their rival school. G -g -g good shape? For what? To teach us how to beat those Callaway cadets, of course. Yeah, they win every time. I'll never get a trophy for my mummy case. All right, Shaggy, listen here. I'm going to need you to help them win the game. She needs a trophy for her mummy case. Their rival school is Colonel Calloway's military school filled with the dorky cadets. They have gadgets and are the preppy contrast to Miss Grimwoods. Students, couple of real dogs. Hey, let me see Miguel. Careful, Grunt. That new school has a... They're just a rival, not really villains, but they have dork written all over them. I can't help but to love them. Maybe we should test it out first. Good idea, Miguel, but not till I say fire. This should put out that pup's fire. Fire? <laughs> Hit the deck! <laughs> As you can see, sir, Run here has a dynamite serve. So I noticed. The volleyball match comes around and the cadets seem like they're rotten cheaters. Keep pressing the attack! Yes, sir! <laughs> But the ghouls have some tricks too, so it's just a weird, zany game. Grimwood wins! Shaggy and Scooby get all nervous because parents' night is coming up, but all the ghouls and ghosts love them. Holy sh! Oh, uh, like, don't hurt him, Mr. Mummy. It's all my fault. We're here! Hurt you? I want to hug you for making my daughter feel like a winner. Awesome! They're so grateful for helping the daughters win the game. The daughters give gifts to the parents. I made it an arts and crafts class. It's a juicer. Now you can have bitter lemonade whenever you want, Papa. <laughs> That's wonderful, Winnie. There's so many cute moments, like when Shaggy falls in the school moat and he's afraid of the sharks who are gonna attack him, but then they all just jump in after him and they go for a leisure swim. I think this is my favorite of the three. It's just a charming movie with charming characters and wholesome moments. It's got lots of silly monster puns and horror humor, which is something I have a soft spot for. Back in the broken gang days, the best episodes were the ones with standout one-off side characters, and this is a good example of that. It's definitely memorable, and it ends with the single greatest contribution to music, the Scrappy Rap. So with it, dance, it was a snap to escape Revolta's trap. Now let's get loose and dance and clap while I lay on my Scrappy Rap. The more and more I learn about Scooby-Doo lore, the farther and farther my one brain cell distances itself from its faded mitosis. Finally, we get to Scooby-Doo and the Reluctant Werewolf. This is a complete homage to Wacky Races, despite the fact Scooby-Doo was never in Wacky Races. Why not just do a Wacky Races film? Dick. Shaggy and Scooby are an ace driving team. Scrappy and Shaggy's girlfriend, Googie, cheer him on from the side. Go Shaggy, go! Keep up the pace! Go all the way and win the race! Yay! However, while this is going on, Dracula and friends, not the same Dracula from Ghoul School, wants to turn Shaggy into a werewolf because they can't have their big monster race car race without a werewolf. So Dracula's henchmen stumble around until they turn Shaggy into a werewolf. Just because I have a little case of hiccups. Hey, Babsy, what do you say to a little smooch? A fate which he accepted reluctantly. And then Shaggy agrees to be in the race and hopes Dracula will turn him back into a not werewolf. I never saw this one as a kid and I didn't particularly like it as an adult. The main side characters here are Dracula and his two henchmen. Bother! That infernal dog ruined our plan! <laughs> Silly! Put that back in place, old boy. We'll try again tomorrow night. <laughs> okay. Dracula is real goofy, but his bit gets old. Shaggy is what he calls Shaggy, and it's funny for the first two times. Shaggy? Shaggy? What kind of a name is Shaggy? The only good part is at the end when Dracula busts out the biggest obstacle for Shaggy to overcome, Genghis Kong. Genghis Kong! Take one! 
which is just a monster name that must have required the biggest of brains to come up with. It's too silly and too low energy for me to go on for how long it goes on for, but it's not notably bad either. I just don't particularly enjoy the silly racing setup. I've never been a fan of car things. Carts? Yeah. Cars? Nah, don't even get me started on this motherfucker. Also, what's with the theme of literally everybody wanting to f Shaggy? Even Dracula's wife. That cutie pie Shaggy is way out in front. So these movies are okay. They got a lot of love on home video and later on Boomerang, so I know a lot of people like watching them and like them. Just holding this DVD copy of Ghoul School makes me so nostalgic. I forgot about these cases Warner Brothers used to use. But besides Ghoul School, these don't really stand out to me too much. So, we're through Scrappy's run of TV content. Yeah. I, and I'm just not convinced that Scrappy deserves the hate he gets. In the context of Scooby-Doo as it was when Scrappy was introduced, he did so little to impact the quality of the show. The show was already feeling stale and repetitive when he came on, and it turns out that style of writing continued despite the introduction of the character, which made Scrappy quickly go from a charming sidekick with some rough edges to an annoying machine filled with catchphrases. But when I didn't like Scrappy, I also didn't like Shaggy and Scooby. When the show did some reworking and brought in some fresh energy to write, Scrappy worked again. In these films, he's either harmless or a welcome addition. To say Scrappy is this horrible abomination onto the series is to just forget what Scooby-Doo is. And I think writer Mark Evanier, who wrote the pilot to Scooby and Scrappy-Doo, put it best. Some seem to view the pre-Scrappy series as animation that compared favorably with Fantasia. But suddenly, when this one character character was added, it abruptly turned into a Saturday morning cartoon show. I don't know why some people hate him so. I don't see that the show was any better the season before. And as I've explained here, his presence got the network to order another season. My read is that folks who don't like Scrappy are few in number, but loud in voice. And I just agree with that so much. I love Scooby-Doo, but it's not this great masterpiece. It has charming characters and the appeal of a B-movie in animated form. So yeah, I'm sure some people genuinely hate Scrappy-Doo but that doesn't explain how a pretty inoffensive character added to a pretty okay show became a canonically mentioned mistake in franchise in joke. That story comes much later. So not next time, because I'm gonna take a break from Scooby-Doo for a while, but sometime soon, I'm gonna finish watching Scooby-Doo. So anyways, I'm well rested. I'm feeling pretty good. You have anything to add, sea monkeys? Sea monkeys. Sea monkeys. Sea monkeys. Sea monkeys. Sea monkeys. Oh no. Sea monkeys. Sea monkeys. Sea monkeys. Sea monkeys. You were supposed to be a permanent cast addition. Sea monkeys. Where'd you go? Sea monkeys. Sea monkeys. Where'd you go? took the sea monkeys, the villain. So anyways, I'm tired. I'm stressed. Follow me on Twitter.